Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello and welcome to session 28 of Principles of Management course. Students, we have been understanding various concepts of management through this particular course and program. Today we will start with discussion on managerial communication. This topic I shall be taking in two parts. So today we will have discussion on part 1 of managerial communication. Before I start with the session, let me narrate a story to you. There was in the forest, there was a lion and this lion had posted a list of all different animals in front of his den. Date wise he had written who all had to come on which day or date as a food to lion. Day one, one animal went and next day the poster was that it is killed. Day two, another animal went and the poster again came up, it was killed. Day 3, it was the turn of a rabbit and rabbit thought that as it is, I do not have any other chance of survival. Let me at least go and talk to the lion once. Let me see what happens if I communicate with him. He went to the lion and he said, I am very small, I have not lived yet much on this earth. I want to survive for few more days. Would you mind if you remove my name from the list? and lion happily accepted and this is what is communicated that importance of communication and discussion at relevant point at relevant positions. So we all must need to understand what this communication is all about, how we must talk to each other and how it leads for better understanding of information. So communication is what primarily with the help of communication people exchange information, they try to understand the information and the concepts, managers in the organization they carry out their tasks and responsibilities so as to fulfill the objectives of the organization. So setting with this pretext let me start with the conceptual clarity of managerial communication as the concept that we have to discuss. So as I have already told you, communication is where we share the information and we try to understand the same. And what do managers do? They do communicate in order to complete their tasks, duties and fulfill the organizational objectives. Communication is also very important students as it is one of the major determinants of organizational effectiveness and success. So what do we mean by organizational effectiveness and success? The goals that we achieve as per the desired standards within the stipulated resources and time, we say that we have reached to the destination within given resources and timeline. Thus, we conclude that organization is highly effective and one of the major determinants of this organizational effectiveness is communication. Further communication works through the entire organization and it impacts all managerial functions. If you may recall, we have already done these managerial functions in the initial sessions of principles of management course. Managerial communication usually occurs at different levels. So what are the levels? It is at intrapersonal level, interpersonal level group level, organizational level and also at times at intercultural level. So what is intrapersonal level? Intrapersonal level is when someone talks to themselves. Now what do we mean by talking to themselves? It is something like we are imagining a conversation with the boss that I am going to talk to my boss regarding the leave which I want to apply or maybe talking to myself and thinking that I will do better from next time. 
So, this is intrapersonal communication. Interpersonal communication, it is the communication between two individuals or multiple individuals. Group level communication is the communication that takes place in the team in an organization or a group. Organizational wide communication is the network of bottom up or top down approach where formal communications from one hierarchical level to the other hierarchical level is communicated. And finally, the inter cultural communication is where two different organizations they communicate or if your organization is a multinational organization then you talk to organization across the borders thus we call it as now talking here means communicating through various mediums which we shall be discussing later in the session moving further communication practices can also be classified into further groups so this classification can be either informal communication, it can be a formal communication, it can also be verbal communication or it can be non-verbal communication. So, we shall be discussing all this during the session and effective communication is very essential for managers to improve their interpersonal relations in the organization. Now, if we see if we do not have effective communication, so this is an ineffective communication right now we are talking about. So, ineffective communication may result in misunderstandings, communication gaps, decrease in employee productivity and in the end decrease in eventually the organizational performance. So, many studies have actually proven the significant correlation. Now, you do you understand students what is a significant correlation? Significant correlation means that there exists some relationship between two variables. So, what are the variables here we are talking about? One variable is communication effectiveness that how well are you communicating in organization. The other variable is organization turnover that is the profit that the organization is getting and the financial performance. So, all these are different variables and they have positive strong correlation with each other thus we what we are trying to communicate here that the it is very important for the top management therefore to create organizational environment which is conducive to the effective communication in organization. Let us now move ahead and try to define various specific definitions as given by learned authors about communication. So, communication is the process by which people attempt to share meanings via transmission of symbolic messages. So, what can be symbolic messages? They can be words, sounds, signals, they can also be gestures. So, communication is a process involving selection production, transmission of signs in such a way so that it helps the receiver to perceive a meaning similar to that which is there in the mind of the communicator. Now, here let us have an example. If I say it is read out there, so that means I am communicating that something dangerous is there. And similarly, if the receiver also has the same knowledge about red color, he or she can interpret it very well that assuming about red color far away means there is some or sign of red color far away means there is some danger we have to stop. This is the rule you follow when you follow the lights, traffic lights on the roads. Moving further. Communication terms which are associated with business, since we are doing a business management course, so we must know what are various terms. So, though in general many communication terms associated with business are interchangeably used, there are few subtle differences amongst them. So, it is hence essential to understand the meaning of each of these terms in specific context. Let us see now these terms in detail. First is the management communication. This refers to the complex communication process that arises as a result of execution of overall management functions. So, there are five managerial functions planning, organizing, staffing, directing and controlling that we have already studied. So, in order to 
execute these functions in organization, whatever communication process takes place, which is generally complex in nature is called as management communication. Another similar term related to management communication is managerial communication. So there is as I mentioned earlier, there is a thin line difference between these terms and they have little bit different, different in their meaning though they sound similar. So this managerial communication refers to specific communication between who all, between managers and their subordinates in the organization. And the focus is on effective accomplishment of tasks and goals in the existing business environment. Moving further, the third term associated with communication is corporate communication. Now this refers to any verbal or written communication which is issued by the company with the intention of enhancing its corporate image and culture. So this can be through brochures or information on website also. All that information corporates communicate to the outside world to enhance their good brand image or in order to make brand building for themselves. The fourth term associated with communication in the organization is business communication. It refers to the process of communication among business partners who are involved in direct transactions. So strategic talks on or negotiations with business associates and correspondence with financial and trade creditors are basically the examples for business communication. Here we are interacting with different stakeholders and these stakeholders are needed to carry out various strategic negotiations or financial dealings. And the last terminology that we have to understand under this particular concept is organizational communication. So it refers to overall communication. Overall communication means it encompasses all other communications that we just now discussed earlier. So, including all the communication that occur within the organization and aims at defining the relationship between two variables that is organization and its environment. This is called as organizational com communication. Now, after this let us have some insight on an example which is from a company. This is Tata Metallics communication strategy to face the challenge of growth. This particular exhibit talks about that Tata Metallics promoted Tata Steel developed a formal communication process. Just see to its students, they have a formal communication process and it was established in 2006. Why it was established? The aim was to meet its fast growing communication needs. The important modes of communication in Tata Metallics include first training and education sessions, focus meetings, bulletin board postings, website postings and emails. And as far as Tata Metallics is concerned, the open door communication culture of its high level management and its meticulous knowledge dissemination process has guaranteed that communication flows through entire organization in a hassle free manner. So here we have seen that what are the ways and means by which Tata Metallics communicates within the organization and what are the gains that the Tata Metallics is getting. Tata Metallics is also having a culture of open door communication with the top management and knowledge dissemination. What is open door communication? Where any employee has full liberty to go and talk to the various senior members or executive members or high level management members without any fear. They have the right, they have this liberty, they can go talk about either some suggestions if they have to share or if they have any kind of grievances or complaints. So after this discussion on the a particular example, we can assert that the main challenge of challenges of all these communication is basically to persuade 
the message recipient to respond posit positively and carried out intended actions. In case of managerial communication students, the aim of manager is to work with their subordinates by exchanging information with them. Now let us try to understand various functions of communication. So, there are four major functions within a group or organization which the process of communication caters to. The first function is about control. Now, what is control and how we can say that through communication we are controlling? We can always do that. In the organization, if there is a meeting notice, it showcases the control of time and the agenda for the meeting that the person, it communicates the same to the person. So, the organizational communication pattern helps the people to follow some systematic procedures and this is communicated through various memos or through various uh, business letters or through various communication patterns. After control, second is motivation. Now, how do we say that communication leads to motivation? By clarifying the employee what is to be done because through communication if it is clear we very well get to know that how we can achieve the targets and what are actually the targets and how they can be done and if the goal is clear students we all understand that we then are in a better position to clearly work towards our objectives. The third function that communication serves is emotional expression. So, what do we mean by emotional expression? Emotional expression is the fundamental where people have the full right to come up with their feelings, their value system, their beliefs. They can share their frustrations and thoughts as well. So, it is a place where you can express yourself emotionally, you can share your feelings, that is the most important thing and this way it enables the organization to maintain a healthy atmosphere in the workplace. And fourth, by now I think we all understand it very well that information exchange is something which is needed by the organization, so thus who fulfills this information exchange? It is through various mediums in organization, through various written and non-verbal methodologies. Further, let us try to understand the importance of communication. By now, we have discussed on various functions of communication. When it comes to importance of communication, it is said that communication is the lifeblood of organization and it is very, very essential for accomplishing the organizational plans, plans that we have already dealt with in the initial sessions of this course. Managerial job basically involves getting work done through others. This is the definition of management also students. So, management managers should spend considerable portion of their time for communication. So, here what is the takeaway? The manager's time is an important input, managers goals and plans are important input and depending on the hierarchical level of hierarchical levels a particular management spends nearly 70 to 90 percent of their time communicating with others. That is why it is called as lifeblood of the organization without communication you cannot move ahead. Now here I would like to narrate an incidence for example if there is an army general and he has to tell the task to the soldiers, what will happen and how the soldiers will listen to him? Always when we are assigned with a task in organization or any place, we have a question in mind, why? Why this is to be done or why I have been chosen to do this? So, if this army personnel clearly answers this why, before that why occurs in mind of the soldier, it will be very easy for soldier to not only complete the task but to complete the task with higher standards than what he was expecting from himself. So that is the role of communication giving a crystal clear clarity on what is to be done and why the same has to be done. This is the same philosophy which manager also has to follow. 
So, managerial communication is critical in successful execution of different managerial roles. What are the managerial roles? Interpersonal, informational and decisional and who gave these roles? Henry Mintzberg, if you people remember quickly recapitulating, Henry, Henry Mintzberg gave three broader roles which were further divided into 10 sub roles of the manager. And these are the roles which a manager has to do and in order to carry out these roles, manager, manager needs to have managerial communication and success of his, his being a manager depends on how well he has played the role with interpersonal, informational and decisional category. I am not defining it at this place because this we have already discussed during discussion on Henry Mintzberg. Now coming on to importance of communication in business from various managerial perspectives. What is the first managerial perspective? Planning. When we talk about importance of communication, so that means why communication is needed at the time of planning. As we know that planning involves collection of necessary information from internal and external sources. So for determining the best course of action. Now in this case as part of planning functions manager need to constantly interact with whom students interact with subordinates and in this regard they may have to do what they may have to write letters issue notices come up with reports or send memos and this is why so that they explain the plan to all parties in the organization. So surely we can say that planning ability of management manager is critically dependent on communication pattern. How well is he able to communicate? He can well very well then plan. Second function of management is organizing which involves relating people with physical resources to each other in such a way that organizational objectives are achieved. So here we think of that how plans can be executed with the help of physical resources plans that we have already made. Now here communication facilitates it becomes a facilitator in organizing activity why because it has first focus on relationship function, relationship function because it is relating people with the resources. Second organizing function as it is telling organization that who will do, what is to be done, where it is to be done and change functions in order to execute the plan we may need to bring in some changes. So specifically talking about the relationship function will refer to the role of communication of the organi communication between the organizational members. These can be team members, this can be subordinate or senior. While organizing function, it will help give us some guidance or what we call as an direction to various members of the organization. And finally, the change function is that it facilitates the organization process of problem solving and takes the organization to greater innovation heights through the change function. So here what we have understood we are trying to find out how communication is related to various managerial functions. First we discussed planning, now we have discussed organizing. Let us move on to the third managerial function that is directing. Now, communication is essential for managers to influence and direct the behavior of their subordinates towards goal and task achievement. This is a very critical element. Why it is a critical element? Because if we want someone to complete a task, completion of task means the person has to do some specific behavior and that specific behavior needs to be introduced or can be directed, can be influenced or controlled. How it can be done? It can be influenced, controlled and directed with the help of proper communication in the organization. It helps the manager to express themselves, to express their feelings. By directing they can tell whether they are angry, whether they are happy, whether they are giving reward, what kind of directions they are giving. Then it helps the managers to counsel also 
by counseling we means that they are telling or in trying to influence the behavior of the manager or the subordinate it also helps to promote very many factors like discipline responsibility and accountability with whom students with subordinates so subordinate then becomes more disciplined more responsible and more accountable towards the organizational task and managers next function is controlling and communication is a principal tool for managers in achieving effective management control why we call it as a principal tool the most important tool because when we talk about downward communication what is downward communication from top level to through middle level to the lower level so when down downward communication is there it helps in controlling and coordinating with the people at the lower level why and how by passing necessary information and what is the necessary information which is passed necessary information can be rules regulations processes and instructions so with this we are able to communicate and control the employees now there is another communication which is upward communication upward communication is from lower level through middle level to top level here it assist this upward communication assist the manager in gathering relevant data and what is this relevant data and from where it is coming relevant data is coming from subordinate and this data is the day to day functioning and working of the organization which the top manager and the middle manager requires for analysis nowadays we talk a lot about big data analysis and this big data helps tomorrow after analyzing to take appropriate decision making after that comes industrial relations so what is industrial relations students industrial relations means any relationship that originates in the industry and what do we mean by originating in the industry relationship between parties in industry including employees employers government trade unions and their representatives and trade organizations so relationship between an employee and employee and employer and another employer an employer and an employee government and employer government and trade unions government and employee all these relations are termed as industrial relations and communication has a very important role in having these industrial relations in right perspective that is cordial and harmonious think of a situation where relationships in industry are not at peace the result is whole of the industrial economy gets disturbed when people who are serving the nation through working on the shop floor are not happy or have some kind of frustrations or grievances and because of which distortion in relationship takes place and how we can resolve it communication is a very important tool by which we can try to have and maintain industrial peace so let us try this to understand industrial relation it is a two way communication process between managers and workers and can create greater understanding between them thus facilitate better understanding of each others position now having said this that is the role of communication in various managerial functions let us move on to the most critical part of communication that is communication process let me explain this to you through theory first communication as a process involves transmission of information from someone who is called as a sender to someone who is called as a receiver in an understandable manner and in this case of managerial communication this process is usually initiated by managers with the intention of achieving organizational goals and objectives so i shall now and just make you understand students the process of communication as theoretically we just have understood that there is a person who is a sender and there is a person who is a receiver and this before communication takes place a purpose expressed as a message to be 
conveyed so we first have a purpose what is to be done through this purpose we move on to the second stage which is called called as encoding of the message this encoding of message means that message is converted to a language which tomorrow receiver can also be understanding then we have to find out a medium to communicate so right now students you are listening to me through this medium of television or maybe your laptops or your phones but this medium is electronic medium which is governed by information technology so i am the sender here you are the receiver and the medium in between is the channel through which you are the communication channel the electronic medium through which you are able to listen to me now what is the next stage that will happen in this communication sender receiver communication between you and me this message is getting received by you whatever i am speaking or whatever is being displayed on the screen after this message is received by you you will try to decode this message and decoding this message means you will try to understand whatever communication has been made concepts that has been uh, cleared during these sessions or new concepts which have been introduced which you, you will tomorrow find to to try to find a meaning from but in between what happens when we choose a medium there are certain things which disturb us and they are called as generally they are called as noise but these noise are not exactly the noises per se that is a sound they can be some thought process noises also where you may have some preconceived notion i may not be clear in communicating so this particular disturbance in general terminology is called as a noise noise means something which because of which the communication process is not getting complete the sender is not able to send the right information in right way receiver is not able to understand the inf correct information in the right manner and this can be completed with the help of this loop which is a feedback always remember a receiver has to give a feedback to the sender so that sender gets the message that yes he has understood the message so this is what you do students with your friends on various social media platforms you send a message to your friend and the friend replies back unless the reply comes until the reply comes what do you perceive you perceive either the student the other friend has not received it or maybe he has not understood it properly or maybe he is not ready to respond to it but once the response comes then you are comfortable and you are at ease because you know that the communication process is complete and what you wanted to convey has already been conveyed to the relevant person now let us study these steps a little bit in detail to so have a better understanding of the process of communication so the first party in communication as i have explained is the sender who wishes to convey a message to the receiver now here the message may be what all can be form it can be an information that the sender wants to share it can be a need or a desire that is a requirement on the part of the sender which he wants to convey to the receiver it can be a feeling it can be a idea also or any other impression that the sender wants to send so the sender's mood frame mood frame of reference abilities knowledge proficiencies approach and background can influence the formation of message to be sent now this is very important point that the message to be sent gets influenced by the personal characteristics of the sender so in case of oral communication what happens students when sender is sending the sender may be sending through body language like your mothers they frown they show you the frown when you don't eat your lunch they with their body language make you understand that they are angry with you then comes the second part of communication process that is encoding encoding involves the conversation or translation of sender's ideas intentions and messages into understandable symbols now this is very important understandable symbol means understand it understandable by the receiver in the form of words color sounds or signals now here the in the case of absence of com common symbols between the sender and the receiver what will happen 
you are intelligent students you can quickly find out that there is bound to occur a misunderstanding and confusion between the two parties what are the parties here sender and the receiver they will have good misunderstanding and confusion and what will be the result result will be communication failure so hence we understand the importance of encoding well very well encoding has to be done in a manner where the receiver also understands the context well next is the channel or the medium so it is essential for sender to know receivers background if you don't understand receivers background maybe what can be the background language also can be a background so if i am speaking in particular language and you don't understand that language then this whole exercise goes futile so the receiver has to understand the language of the sorry the sender has to understand the language of the receiver the background of the receiver and finally the nature and type of encoding for message also depends on channel of communication that has been adopted you can have channel of communication which includes fax telephone internet meetings conversation video conferences in today's time radio waves or postal systems so these channels of communication are used by two basic mediums of message transmission speaking and writing so right now i am communicating with you in both manners by writing also on this board and speaking and interacting with you too so this is the importance of having communication or you can say the role of channel of communication in the whole process of communication so the choice of communication medium is usually influenced by various factors what will you choose as a medium would you like to speak would you like to write would you like to Uh, send a written material in newspaper print media whether you want to go for electronic media etc or you want to go for non verbal body language so which medium will you choose will be depending on certain factors and what are the factors on which it depends first do you want to maintain the permanency of the record if yes if you want to ma maintain permanency of record you will go for a medium which can help you achieve that maybe you store it in a hard drive or in a pen drive or somewhere in your electronic gadget and also you keep a hard copy of it now whether it is urgency of matter then there is a probability you will not go for any hard copy preparations you may send it through electronic media through email to quickly get the response also based on nature of the response which is required that is if you want immediate response especially in in terms of when we talk about medical sciences medical emergencies we want immediate response to the communication so nature of response required also helps in deciding which medium we want to go for communication the number of responses also if you want to collect huge data then you have to see for example nowadays to collect huge data we go for something called as google forms through google forms we can disseminate them to across the world and we can have big amount of data or responses based on our work then comes nature of participation desired such as face to face meeting for certain things it is always essential to have a face to face meeting because those are critical issues and they may require some kind of urgencies or urgent decisions and they may be very uh you can say important or critical when i say important or critical so that means they need not to be told to outside world so in such a case the face to face medium is required number of receivers involved and such as individual or group that will also help us in finding out what is the communication medium so if it is individual we can make a single telephone call if it is group probably then we will flash it on some group email activities etc nature of communication such as formal or informal will also help us decide on which medium we are going to choose if it is a formal communication we have to go through the formal channels of communication which are accepted by the organization if it is informal then we can go for informal methods like grapevine the audience's channel preference also is an important aspect which has to be considered before we go and choose the medium next step in the communication process was receiver that is in 
in this case right now you are the ones so person who gets the messages intended for him or her is a receiver now here there may be single or multiple receivers like in this in this session particularly there can be multiple receivers who are listening to me so the presence of com common language vocabulary understanding and mutual interest between the sender and the receiver are very important prerequisites for any communication to be meaningful to be meaningful means that after listening to the sessions you have comprehended them you have understood them and you can tomorrow use this information for your work but there is a disclaimer however the mood and preconceived notions or ideas in physical environment or receivers can influence their understanding of the message received so when we talk about con concepts like mood or preconceived notions so that means the one who is listening right now or a physical environment so maybe if you are listening right now and some kind of construction work is going around you then probably that is a noise or a disturbance and you may not be in a position to completely listen and properly understand similarly if you had a fight in the morning with your sibling and your mood is not good you may not be in a position to understand the message properly then comes decoding now this is what is at the end of the receiver at the end of the receiver means at the part of the receiver so decoding is what it is reverse of the encoding the process of breaking the encoded message and converting it into an understandable form is known as decoding so th through decoding the receivers they convert the symbols such as words and signals back to sender's original message from ascertaining its meaning and determining their responses because once you have understood you have ascertained the meaning you have understood the meaning after understanding the meaning what would you like to do you will try to respond to that meaning that you have understood you will either say okay i am very happy to receive it or you may say no this is not right i want to give my own opinions to it so it will all depend on how you have understood the how much have you understood the message and once you are clear about that you have understood the message and you want to give to the further response then it is the time for you to give the feedback so response of the receiver to decoded message is usually known as the concept of feedback it helps the senders in knowing whether the communication has produced an intended response or not and feedback may also be sent in a coded form by the recipient of original message to the sender for decoding and interpretation as you must have seen that for some critical uh, activities coding of messages is done and the other party also knows is the coding and decoding of the message so the whole communication process can be considered as effective if the message was understood by receiver in the same way as the sender has send it so here we conclude the process of the communication now we move on and try to understand something called as communication methods so when direct feedback is not available for certain reasons then manager may communicate through various methods so you need to communicate to your employees the organizations what kind of communication you want to make you may need to send them some new policy that the organization has come up with new policy with respect to leave new policy with respect to transfer etc or maybe you want to compliment one of your workers on extra hours she has put in to help the team complete the order you must tell one of your employees about changes in his job or you would like to get the feedback from the employees or you want to tell them about the new year which is coming up all these cases in each instances you will have to communicate with your members so how will you communicate in all these scenarios so thus we say that managers have a wide variety of communication methods from which they choose usually there are 12 questions which are asked in order to communicate properly so the first question is feedback how quickly can the receiver respond to the message if that is the point that we try to understand the timeline of response that helps us to find out how we would, would like to communicate tomorrow complexity capacity can the method effectively process the complex 
messages. So, here we are talking about a characteristic of the message. Characteristic of the message is that can this method effectively process the complex message. The third is breadth potential in the medium or the method. So, how many different messages can be transmitted using this method? Now, how do we define the term breadth potential here? We have two terms, one is depth of knowledge and the second is breadth of knowledge and we can also say it as depth of information and breadth of information. When it comes to depth of information, you are talking about only one concept in detail. In breadth potential, we are talking about various multiple aspects or various different kinds of information to be sent. So, while we are choosing the communication method, we have to identify if we have breadth potential of the message, multiple informations to be shared, then does this medium have that capacity to share with the receivers. The fourth point that we can ask is the confidentiality. Can the communicators be reasonably sure that the messages are received only by those where it is intended. So, the medium or the method that I am choosing for communicating is confidential also. Is it confidential? Then has it got encoding ease? So, the next question answers can sender easily and quickly use this channel that is they are in a position to encode the message by the receiver. So, in this scenario we wish to say that the medium chosen or the method chosen should have encoding ease and also similarly the medium or the method that we choose should have a decoding ease. So, can receiver easily and quickly decode the message that is the next question to be answered. Here we have tried to ask six questions to understand whether the method will give the feedback properly, handle complexity capacity, has the breadth potential, can maintain confidentiality, can give ease of encoding and can e give ease of decoding. Next six questions pertain to time space constraint. So, do senders and receivers need to communicate at the same time in the same space or it is different? Someone is sitting in western world and someone is sitting in eastern world. So, that means they have time and space differences with each other. So, if that is the case, the time and space is a constraint, here it is day and in eastern it is night, can communication method process communication despite this time and space constraint? Then comes is it cost effective? How much does it cost to use this method? Can I afford the cost of this method for communication that I am trying to go for? Then interpersonal warmth. How well does this method convey interpersonal warmth between sender and the receiver? So, in interpersonal warmth means that they are able to express their feelings appropriately. For example, why we are mentioning it here? When you have a telephonic talk that can be only verbal or that can be with visuals also that is a video call also. So, definitely the interpersonal warmth is more when it is a visual call than a verbal call and apart from telephonic if it is a written material then the interpersonal warmth is higher in the telephonic call than the written material. So, while choosing the method we have to ensure whether it is catering to interpersonal warmth or not. Then comes formality, does this method have the needed amount of formality? Formality here means that it is a little bit formal in procedure and what or how much, what is the magnitude of formality? So, here it says that needed amount of formality. So, if the communication is between a superior and subordinate, definitely it requires some amount of formality between the Scannability. So, does this method allow the message to be easily browsed and scanned for relevant information? So, this is another aspect that we have to understand and find in the method or the proposed method that it is easily browsed and scanned. 
so that browsed and scanned means that if I am sending a email, the other person also has internet access. Then only sending an email has any point, otherwise there is no point. So scanning here means that I am sending through email, I have internet, sender also has internet, he can also receive the email. So he can browse it or scan it. Last is time of consumption. So does the sender or receiver exercise the most control over when the message is dealt with? So, if I am sending it right now a message and I want that immediately action should be taken then that is the time of conception. We have basically hardly any time to consume. But the kind of time of consumption you have right now, the le recorded lectures that you are listening to at this point in time, this exercise you, you have a control over time of consumption. You can listen to these sessions at your ease probably. So, time of consumption is another aspect when we think about medium. So, these are the 12 questions students that we need to ask when we choose a particular medium for communication. So, further students communication encompasses interpersonal and organizational communication as we already know interpersonal is between individuals or two or more people and organizational communication is which all the patterns, networks and systems of communication within the organization takes place. As you can see here some kind of network is being shown. So, everyone talking to every other person. So, that is the organizational communication. What is interpersonal communication? A company communication process that involves face to face contact between two or more individuals is called as interpersonal communication. In this form of communication senders and receivers normally communicate through various sounds or words or maybe facial expressions or gestures or postures. But there is a personal and direct interaction amongst the participants for this communication process and interpersonal communication has a very important aspect that it has an emotional appeal. What is emotional appeal? Here we are expressing trying to persuade people, maybe we can motivate them also and we can showcase our feelings too. So, that is the characteristics of interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication performs three important functions. Linking, command and control function and enculturation function. Let us see these. Linking function is this communication functions aims at promoting flow of information amongst various parts of the organization. Because it is communicating at various parts of the organization, thus it is called as a linking function. It also helps people connect with their environment. Again, there is a connect between organization members and organization environment, thus it is a linking function. And the basic purpose of communication here is to achieve the desired level of coherence or unity among the organization and its members. So, why are we going for linking function? Because we want good amount of coherence and MAT and unity amongst the organizational members. Then comes command and control function. Now, under command and control function, it aims at issuing directives. You get directives in your schools and colleges, identifying problems which the organization is facing motivating people and monitoring their performance. So, in a nutshell communication acts as a managerial tool to command and control the employees of an organization. And then comes enculturation functions. So, enculturation function here means creating and maintaining desirable organization culture. What is organization culture? Various values, beliefs, norms, standards, ethics which are followed in the organization are part of organization culture and what enables to have a creation of good values, beliefs, norms, standards and ethics and communication of that is the 
enculturation function of communication. It works to get the employees influenced by those organization cultures and also facilitates effective integration of members into an organization. Here I would like to tell you one point that in many organizations there are pictures which are placed on various places, corridors etc of the organization and these pictures are of the business leaders or the heroes in business world. And why they are mentioned, these heroic stories are narrated either through pictures or through words or through some presentations to various employees which helps develop the culture which those forefathers of the organization or stalwarts of the organizations have created by their heroic management deeds. Further, if we try to find out the types of interpersonal communications, we have already dealt with what is interpersonal communication. Now let us try to find what are various types of interpersonal communication. So this is verbal and nonverbal. Managers generally adopt both types of these communications to perform the function. Verbal we understand it is through words, nonverbal it is through body language. Verbal communication, the aim of manager is to communicate messages through spoken or written words to the receiver, while messages can be communicated through conversation and presentation or both. And here the characteristic of message can be urgency of situation, accessibility of communication, equipment and faci facility, convenience of participants etc. will influence choosing which method for verbal communication. Types of verbal communications can include important forms of oral communications are interviews, meetings, conferences, phone calls, voicemail messages etc. This I think you all know very well. Types of verbal communication within written communication includes that you have to come up with messages in writing. So thus managers to think, draft, recheck and encode the message before sending them and receiver can also be required time to decode and read and understand the message very well. So written communication is more precise and explicit as compared to the nonverbal communication. Now what is nonverbal communication? It is the transfer of meaningful information from one person to another with the means of other than written and spoken words. They can be your facial expressions, your postures, there can be non-verbal clues or actions. Let us see what are these. This can be a sign language, object language or an action language. When it comes to sign language, we can show a symbol like you see various symbols are written on the boards by traffic police. Object languages with the help of object we are able to identify that what is the meaning of this particular concept and action languages when we do some action by our hands and these convey the message to the receiver. For examples feeling of joy, anger, fear, arrogance, aggression, victory and defeat can be conveyed through various gestural expressions. When we are happy and we have victory of something what do we do we make a v sign and tell everyone okay we have won it and if we are in arrogance or aggression we have a frowning gesture on our face so important kinds of non-verbal communication students that people use is body language body language typically has facial expressions which includes changes in eyes mouth nose etc they also can show gestures like hand signals there is another content of non-verbal communication which is called as proxemics. It refers to use of space gap between the communicator and the listener. Now what does it mean? It means larger the space between the communication participants, more formal is their relationship. So proxemics is a distance in communication which is used to find out whether the communication is formal or informal like you talk back home with your parents with your siblings it is a non-formal method because the space gap between you two is least while when you talk to your teacher the space gap is very high so that is the more formal way or proxemics communication of non-verbal then artifacts also communicate a lot what are artifacts your clothes decorative ornaments perfumes shoes eyeglasses and watches by this we try to convey a message to those who are seeing us. So that is a non-verbal stimuli that we are giving to the receiver. 
then time is another aspect in non verbal it is a non verbal tool in conveying the message to communication participants so a strict address adherence to time by communicator can indicate <coughs> his or her desire to be punctual like your teachers they close the door when you enter into the class that shows they are highly punctual and they respect the time then it is territoriality it is a non verbal signal relating to physical space in possession of the person so the for instance the way furniture is arranged using physical space available in office can express the intention of communicator as related to audience and last is the para languages it is it involves non verbal aspect of communication that influences the meaning of messages and here it deals more with how the message is communicated than what it is said so when we talk about para languages students we mean that if i am saying that you are a good boy so how am i saying that is it a sarcastic tone or is it a polite tone this para language this tone enables the person to understand whether it is a compliment for me or whether it is a comment for me so today we try to understand various types of communication communication methods and the communication process in the first part of managerial communication this is the bibliography students which i have referred to for this particular session you may also refer for later on and this is all from my side for this managerial communication part 1 thank you